up watching things like Jaws and then when you go in the ocean you hear that soundtrack in your head and you're told to be scared. The whole way that sharks are portrayed in the media, all the language used around sharks. So dogs play and dolphins frolic and sharks attack. There's no naturally occurring way that those words go together. It's just something that's been created. People need to think more critically about what they're reading in the media and realise that that gnarly looking picture of a shark with that crazy scary headline with some pun about sharks is not a factual representation of what's going on in the ocean. It's just a way for the media and the newspaper to sell newspapers and to make it look more interesting. I think all of us, everyone would have had a fear of sharks at one point of our lives. It's just a natural thing that we've been, you know, pushed to believe. So just shark diving in Hawaii, I spent three months there and every day I was kind of swimming with a lot of different sharks and yeah, it just gets to a point where everything you're taught as a kid is just completely different to what's real. So. People in the media are, uh, are vampires and it doesn't matter what you say and what you do, they will twist and turn your story to make it sound better for them. It's disgusting the way that they treat you. You are a dollar sign, you're um, I don't know, a promotion for men or who knows what it is but you're not, you're not a human. And then there's an article about me which was uh, totally blown out of proportion. I got a, an apology from, but um, they called me 45, mid 40s or something, and I was fat. <laughs> so yeah, it was, it was a very strange way of writing an article, and again, it just it proves that the media are just, it is what it is. If you look at the science, there is no evidence to suggest that there's one shark doing multiple attacks. But it's a handy thing for the media to cotton onto because then you've got this supervillain, this one rogue shark with a taste for human flesh that just keeps coming back for more. And in reality, it's just not true. That's just a plot line from Jaws. Uh, last year on February the 8th, at about 10 to 6 in the morning, I went surfing, got bitten by a um, three and a half metre bull shark. We got out the back together. Uh, that's when I realised that we we're actually in a bait ball because the water turned into like a washing machine and dolphins were smacking the surface and jumping and feeding frenziedly. I got to the car and handed my friend the keys and they said oh, I've never driven a car and I don't have my licence, which I didn't know. So I drove myself to hospital and that's my story. Those rogue ones that make home and, you know, on seal colonies and on surfers, maybe they do need to get knocked on the head. You know, we, we have been killing sharks phenomenally and keeping the, the population under wraps. Like I've got pictures of, of, of uh, one of my best friends standing in a gutted shark in Port Ferry in the early 80s with their grandfather, fisherman, you know, proud as punch about it. And you look at it and you're thinking, how old is this beast? You know, it's, it's ancient and what are they doing with it? You can't eat, can't eat that meat, it's full of metal. So when the nets were originally put in in the 30s, the reason they were put in was to stop sharks from setting up territories because in those days we thought that sharks stayed in one area and that was their little home, that was their territory and they didn't move around. And now we know that sharks are highly migratory, most species are highly migratory, so they don't deter sharks from setting up territories, they don't make the beaches any safer and there's absolutely no evidence that they've decreased the number of shark encounters at all. Showing sharks without their teeth is like a super positive thing. Like, so if I post a shark photo, I normally get comments saying this is my worst fear or this and that. They'll probably never see a shark. And if they do, like, to an extent, there's nothing to be worried about, you know what I mean? So I just try to give them facts and just show the shark in its natural habitat and where you're not scaring them on a daily basis like some other social media posts are doing. A common misconception is that the net is a barrier maybe from headland to headland to fence in a section of ocean. And in reality, it's just, it's like a fishing net. It's about six metres tall in 12 metres of water and 120 metres long in possibly kilometres of beach. So it's just little sections of net. And the aim of those nets is to catch and kill. And we know that they kill thousands of turtles, whales, dolphins. They've killed whale sharks. They've killed every species of turtle, all of which are endangered. And we did a paddle out to raise awareness about those drum lines. As we were out there, the boat was coming along and actually baiting those drum lines. We were maybe a few metres away and maybe 30 metres from us, there was a whole bunch of people surfing. So it basically was, 
huge chunks of bait on hooks right next to surfers. And this is not uncommon. That's what happens with a lot of the drum lines. They're not far from where people are surfing. And I think it's just common sense to think that it's not a good idea to be baiting giant hooks right near where people are surfing. There's no way that's making people any safer. As a person on the planet, we have a natural healthy fear for things that are bigger than us, like lions, sharks. But most of the fear that people have in society is just based on what they're told from the media, from newspapers. So if we're constantly told there's this killer lurking in the ocean, then that's what we begin to believe. Murder, 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 murder,